We're driving a 2022 Kia K5. Coming up, we're gonna tell you why, though enticingly priced, we cannot recommend the base Kia K5 LX trim. But first, information explosion. For those who are wondering, yes, the K5 used to be called the Optima. It is a mid-size sedan. Let us begin with interior. Interior style thought, sweetie. It feels upscale, but I like that there's some unusual touches, like this chunky, metallic-looking plastic here. I also like this material here. Is this wood? Is no, I, that's not wood. <laughs> um, but it does have like a texture to it. I think the yes. subtlety is what makes that work. The door handles are rather <laughs> unusual. The vestigial door handles. And the nubs are made of shiny black plastic, which are immediately covered in dust and fingerprints. It is funny that um, the single most fingerprint ridden material is the one they use on the single most common touch point. I love how the transmission selector looks like the character from Katamari Danamachi. Boy, that's a super obscure <laughs> reference. I'm gonna go mainstream. Uh, you guys know that uh, scene in Star Wars where they're powering up the Death Star? Yeah. It looks like <laughs> It's a conversation piece. It really is. Adding to the fanciness of our um, tester here is this chestnut brown leather, which is an option only on the very, very highest trim. You'd have lower material qualities in a more mainstream trim, but overall, yeah, I think it is a very nice looking little uh, sedan. I was really impressed at how roomy the back seat was. I fit in the back seat just fine. Kiddo, how do you find getting in and out of this thing? lemon squeezy <laughs> and then getting the car seat in and out any issues with that installing the car seat was simple the latch points are just exposed and it was an appropriately sized door opening trunk space 16 cubic feet which is good i like that there are 60 40 split fold seats with releases in the cargo area so that's all quite convenient as for safety, the NHTSA rates the Kia K5 as a five-star overall vehicle. The IIHS also gives it a top safety pick plus. There are nine airbags strewn throughout the cabin, plus there's a full suite of active driver assists like automatic emergency braking and lane keeping assist. So in terms of safety, very, very strong. What do we think? Is the Kia K5 family friendly? Yay! Family friendly. Yeah. Family friendly. Yeah, the kid thinks so too. <laughs> Rear window test. Almost all the way down, boo! Armrest test. Here I am driving in a comfortable eight and four, and I'm gonna say that I can keep my elbows on both perches well, with relative ease. Sure, they could be slightly closer, but I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable. This is soft. There's some stitching here, but it doesn't abrade my, uh, abrade, is that the right word? It doesn't hurt my weak elbows too much. And uh, same deal on the outside, very softly padded. I'm gonna go 80% inboard, 80% outboard. Hey, hey! Have you subscribed to our channel? If you'd like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family and occasionally have some helicopter adventures, please consider subscribing. Style! Let me very briefly thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. I'm not wearing them so I can connect with you emotionally as a host, but Evie's wearing her <laughs> ophthalmic line. Sweetie, tell them about your glasses. These are made from resilamide, so they are very durable. They have thin temples, so they easily fit under a headset or a helmet, and they come with removable magnetic tinted lenses so that you can wear them as sunglasses or wear them as your daily glasses. If you're afflicted with bad vision, you can do like Evie does, or if you have brilliant 2020 vision like me or something approximating that, you can use their sunglasses. I really like flying eyes in my daily life, and I especially love them when I'm flying in the helicopter or wearing a helmet. If you can appreciate aviation grade eyewear in your life, click the link in the description below, use the promo code MICA for 10% off, Flying Eyes! Do you like the style of the K5? I do. It looks very sporty, especially on the front with all the 
trim pieces below the headlight. There's a lot of dimensionality to it. This is the GT trim, so it looks a little bit sportier than your standard K5, but there are elements that uh, go across the K5 lineup, that sort of zigzag headlight pattern. The rear looks a lot like the Kia Stinger, which was uh, designed to be a sporty vehicle. I know sedans aren't all the rage these days, but I think it's a good looking vehicle. What do you think though? Do you like the K5 style or do you dislike it? Tell us in the comments. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram in motion. So we're driving a K5, but it is the GT trim, and it has a sport suspension. And you might think, oh, well, that might be a little bit abusive. But I find ride quality, it is a little bit taut, but it's still quite comfortable. Noise also seems fairly controlled inside the cabin. The thing that really jumps out to me, though, driving this thing is the steering. If you want people to think it's, it's a sporty car, you make the steering super heavy. Oh, man, I'm working so hard. It must be sporty. And the K5 is kind of the opposite. Uh, even if you put it into sport mode, it's not excessively heavy and there's a real immediacy to the steering it's a very um, quick steering ratio and I find this thing to be so predictable and um, it tracks so true around the corners I, I really enjoyed driving this thing more than I could have anticipated as you ease into the accelerator there's these immediate responses um, when you're already moving um, there's a lot of torque available and the thing that blows my mind is that uh, the k5 GT um, has all this power and yet no torque steer. Sweetie, do you know what torque steer is? You've told me probably 50 times and I have no idea. It's that thing where in a front wheel drive car when you um, get on the accelerator, the steering wheel will actually pull one direction or the other. There is none of that. And I'm not sure how Kia managed to achieve that. It does also point out the fact that there's a lot of power here and the K5 could exploit that even better if it had all wheel drive. All wheel drive is available on the K5, but not in the most powerful GT trim, which I think is kind of funny. If you floor it from a stop, there is a brief pause until the turbos come alive, but overall, plenty of power, great handling, comfortable ride. There is a lot to like driving the K5. I'm feeling great about the K5, but let's see what Evie thinks. Evie's at the wheel. First thoughts, how do you feel driving around our little mountain town? It, the steering on it is really light and easy. Acceleration seems good, and I really like the way it sounds. There is a sporty quality here that um, isn't just for people who like driving sportily. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Are you experiencing some level of fun? I am experiencing some level of fun. How's your visibility? The windows are definitely like narrow this way. But that woman thought you were waving at her and I just leaned into it to give a supplemental wave. <laughs> K5 drivers are just so friendly, aren't they? We are. The tiny window in the back I can actually see out of, which is rare because usually it's blocked by the car seat. Over my left shoulder, this thick B pillar is right in the way, but that's based on my seating position. Because I am short, I have to be closer to the wheel. Yeah, but overall, um, generally good views out? Yes. One last question, um, any thoughts about the brakes? I had a hard time braking smoothly, especially on hills. They might um, be a little bit touchier because this is a slightly sportier rendition of K5. So uh, maybe mm. you're getting a little bit more immediacy. Yeah, but overall you're feeling pretty good driving the K5? I am. Awesome, I'm getting back to the driver's seat. Yeah, there is a lot to like driving the Kia K5, especially this GT. By the way, the GT uh, comes with paddle shifters, and I'm gonna make use of that right now as we get a little bit zippy coming down the road here. Now, normally we drive SUVs, so you don't have a lot of opportunities to ride with me in something that can really cling, <laughs> but check this out. Like, and the steering is so predictable. It is so easy to drive this thing quickly, but um, without fear. It doesn't feel nervous. It just tracks exactly where you want it to go and then power out of the corners. Oh my, that's a good time. Moving onward to emotion factor. Sweetie, is there an emotion factor here? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> With you at the wheel, it's light terror, 
but thrilling. Especially in GT form. There's a strong emotion factor here because it is really fun to drive. You might not expect that from a sensible mid-sized Kia sedan. No! But here we are. <laughs> I also think that they've done some great stuff with the styling. It's evocative and it looks like something that you might be proud of rather than just a boring sedan. And there are some boring sedans out there, so this <laughs> uh, sits in contrast. If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Kia K5 of your very own, I'm guessing you're going to need to sell your current car first. If you'd like to know what the price of your current car is, lean, oh my god, that guy's in our lane. Oh god. I don't trust that guy's driving, but you know who I do trust? Kelly Blue Book, the trusted <laughs> resource in vehicle pricing. Click the link in the description below to find out how much your car is worth. Moving on to remarks. Item number one, infotainment. So the standard screen is an eight inch screen, and this is a weird Kia thing, but uh, the eight inch screen comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But if you go to the higher trims that have the larger 10.25 inch screen like we have here, then it's a wired version of CarPlay and Android Auto. And even more weird is the fact that it comes with the standard wireless charge pad. So if you wanna use the charge pad, you could do that, but you're still gonna have to run a wire if you want smartphone integration. So I think maybe this is more like a passenger could use it, but still, it's an odd setup that they have. That said, how do you you like the interface it looks really cool although from a usability perspective I really do appreciate when the icons are different colors because it makes it easier to use while I'm driving but the menus are laid out in a clear way there's a lot of flexibility in the audio cues I love that you can adjust the maximum volume on startup because sometimes people have different <laughs> comfort levels with loud music um, and also sounds of nature have you guys ever wanted to enjoy uh, the fun sounds of an open air cafe while driving your family down the mountain? <laughs> well, now you can. My favorite is the snowy day one because it is not peaceful at all because all it is is like loud footsteps crunching through ice. <laughs> just 12 miles further, we might just live. <laughs> Hey guys, can I share an automotive mystery with you? Ooh. This is really weird, but if you look on the steering wheel, there's uh, four different little switches here, and only one of them is untextured. Is this a mistake? <laughs> Why is this? <laughs> there's a lack of symmetry, and I'm like, did this switch break and this is the only one they could swap in here? <laughs> did they do some research and they're like, people do not want to move tracks forward and back with a textured button. Why is that? <laughs> I love how your mind just spins on these things. And it's not even a problem. It's like, like it works just fine, but it's just like, what, what, this doesn't make any sense. We should talk about engine choices. So we've got a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine in this K5 GT here, but there's also a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine for the base K5. The GT comes with an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission, while the base engine has a traditional eight-speed automatic. As mentioned previously, all-wheel drive is available for the K5, but only on the mid-level LXS and GT line trims. Oh, and I should mention that all-wheel drive does have a pretty noticeable hit to fuel economy. We should talk about drive mode. You got a little drive mode selector here, and I like that there's a Sport Plus, which turns off your traction control, so you can uh, needlessly make um, tire squeal as you're exiting corners. I actually use Sport Plus uh, driving around the mountains and enjoyed it a lot. And then there's a custom mode too, so you can make it exactly as you want. In the beginning of the video, we teased that, though enticingly priced, we could not recommend the base K5 LX trim. Here's why. It has a fixed rear seat. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but the first time you go anywhere and you buy a curtain rod, <laughs> it's like, well, how am I gonna uh, finagle this home? Um, that's just a really like annoying thing where you're trying to save some money and then later it's like, I sure wish I could flip down the seats, which is by the way, a great segue into, sweetie. Yeah. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Oh yeah. If you're wondering, our trim recommendation is which vehicle trim will give you the essentials you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. I'm going to recommend stepping up to the LXS trim. That adds things like smart key access, a smart trunk where you stand back there and it'll automatically open after three seconds, rear USB ports, and oh, 60-40 split rear seats, and then things like blind spot warning. There's also rear cross traffic alert, so if you're backing out of a parking lot and if there's a car coming laterally, it'll let you know. And and safe exit assist, which if you're parked on a street, it'll let you know if a vehicle's coming up behind you and warn you, hey, don't get out right now. 
The crazy thing is that that LXS trim is only $1,000 more than the base trim. It would be crazy to not get the LXS. On that note, good news, for 2023, it looks like Kia has killed the base LX trim. So if you're buying a 2022, you still might have to make that choice. But 2023, it goes right to LXS as the base trim. Also for 2023, it looks like all-wheel drive is only available on the GT line. When I mentioned Smart Key Access earlier, I should have mentioned that this is a minor annoyance, but I really like when you just grab the door handle and it's like, there's a hand on me, better unlock. In the uh, K5, you have to push the little black button on the door handle to get it to unlock. Man, this is really moving up the hierarchy of needs, but uh, I prefer the handle versus having to push a button. I prefer the handle too, because I'm always second guessing, like, did I really lock it? Did I unlock it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and last complaint, uh, the rear vents that are in our vehicle actually don't come on the K5 until you come up to the EX trim. So if you're going with one of those lower trims, um, your uh, rear seat occupants will be a little warmer or a little cooler than they would prefer. If you want to absolutely load up your Kia K5, you can add things like ventilated front seats, power memory front seats, a really nice um, 360 cam, very clear picture, and a Bose 12-speaker audio system. And then I'll also mention that Kias all come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. As for the competitors, we've got the Honda Accord, which you can get as a hybrid, the Toyota Camry, which can come as a hybrid or a V6 and with all-wheel drive, there's the Hyundai Sonata, which also could be had as a hybrid, and then the Subaru Legacy, which comes with standard all-wheel drive. Given the K5's limited availability of all-wheel drive and the fact that you can't get it as a hybrid, there might be reasons to choose one of its competitors, though we do like the K5. If we missed any remarks, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Kia K5, it is a very functional, usable machine, but with just a little bit of added pizzazz. To me, it is my child's sparkly shoes of mid-size sedans. Let's see that sparkle, kiddo. Sparkle, sparkle. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos where we review cars as a family and the occasional helicopter adventure, feel free to subscribe. If you'd like to see what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram. Family! I think we've done a pretty good job reviewing the Kia K5. May I have a five? May I have a five? And you, come get your five. Uh, your K5. Ah! <laughs>